here at this institute somewhere in Germany, they are interested in people that have related experience that could maybe give up some of their time or uh, we find some way to support them uh, to come and set up uh, various apparatus that could allow for this field interference uh, along with mag magnets, uh, permanent magnets and uh, static electric fields to see if we can replicate the Hutchison effect. So uh, this is a unique opportunity uh, and uh, please contact us if you're interested uh, listing your experience and uh, how, how you think you can add to the project. So. Uh, there is already a guy that's uh, very good with high frequency and antenna design. So we need to have a discussion in the community um, looking at the science that surrounds kind of, uh, you know, resonant modes, uh, uh, phonon resonant modes, sound in materials. And then to think about what billet sizes you would need for uh, um, and, and, and matched antennas. Uh, as you can see, there's there's probably the opportunity to create every frequency you would want uh, here. And uh, there's uh, another component up here, uh, I think somewhere. Uh, uh, maybe uh, the colleague here can find it. Have you got that uh, short arc tube? Is it up there? Okay, how do we get Oh, <laughs> There's a short arc tube and it's up here. It's quite high up. And you may have seen this in one of Hutchison's videos. Oh, here we go. So... This is a short arc tube. Uh, I'll put it over here because I'll give a nice contrast. And this is the sort of thing that you might have in a projector for a, um, uh, for a cinema projector. And it produces an incredibly bright white light. And you have your cathode here and your anode. So it's kind of like a, a shoulders uh, charge cluster generator, but without the wetted cathode and so forth. But I don't think he was using this as a light bulb. He was just using it as a means to create uh, charge uh, discharges. And those uh, 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 could be creating evos and, and scalar waves that are able to go into the environment. So you, you will see him using this. Whether, whether that's particularly necessary, uh, we don't know, but it's here as well. It's something else to consider. Uh, I'm going to put that over there just for safety reasons. <laughs> um, and so... Yeah, uh, people are interested uh, in either supporting uh, getting this operational. Uh, like I say, all the components of a lot of work has gone into cleaning them and making them work. So we just need to look at the samples and, uh, and think about how the actual technology is working uh, to enable these disruption effects, these turning to jelly. Now... Um, when, when the material was very long and thin, i.e. the aspect was very short across one dimension and, and long, that's when the a glowing effect apparently occurred. Uh, so uh, one example given in John Alexander's book is a, a rat tail file that uh, was suspended between two pieces of wood. And it's very important that it's either on some non um, uh, conductive surface or uh, suspended between two insulators uh, such that uh, you can build up the charge. It doesn't leak to ground and a dry environment, I would imagine, would be also very good. This is why uh, uh, Tesla and uh, 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 T. Henry Moray uh, like to work in the desert uh, because the charge can build up on your, in your equipment and affect these uh, weird uh, effects. Uh, so there, there's that uh, in terms of the uh, aspects to think about for um, the glowing and the disruption effects. And then uh, you may have seen the video where he has a, a metal ball. And uh, for arguments, let's say this is a cannonball. And the interesting thing with the sphere is, of course, um, the... Uh, resonant mode could be the same from any angle. So if you've got your uh, field interference from your uh, different radio frequencies, um, they could actually be the same radio frequency. Uh, and uh, where, if, if, if the, 
some aspect of that field is able to enter into the metal, uh, which is you know, counterintuitive a little bit, um, then you could get this uh, uh, field interference and maybe at those points you get the nucleation uh, for the inner material um, uh, charge cluster or something going on in there. And in the case of iron, iron doesn't want to transmute, it doesn't want to break down so much um, uh, or, or melt as much as uh, aluminium or turn to jelly as much as aluminium, for instance. Um, and this may enable much larger uh, charge clusters to, uh, to occur, and that allows the, the anti-gravity effect. And you will see this video where the, the, the cannonball is rotating in multi-axes and lifting up and down. Um, I, maybe someone can work out how to fake that, I don't know, but I, I, I think what you're seeing is, is a real effect. So you have this ball uh, that rotates like this, and then it's going up and down. Uh, and I think the sphere is a very good example to do that. So for transmutation uh, and disruption effect, long, long billets like this, for anti-gravity uh, spheres, and very, very thin and long sections for trying to replicate the glowing <coughs> effect. Thank you very much.